What could you truly become capable of if you were living in greater resonance and synchronicity with your essence? If you were able to be aligning with your divine every day and creating from that energy, are you ready to explore and activate that? Let's get started aligning divine. Now, here's your host, soul and body coach, Keisha Clark. <laughs> Oh, goodness gracious, it is a fabulously beautiful day, and I am so excited to welcome, welcome, welcome you to coming to play here on Aligning Divine radio show on the Inspired Choices Network. I am Keisha Clark. I am grateful for your coming to play with the show whenever and wherever and however you're actually playing with this show. So um, for today, we are recording on our live day, which is Wednesdays at 2 p.m. Eastern Time. And today we are playing with Praying in Your Plenty. Aha, uh-huh, we're going there, kids. <laughs> So, <laughs> I mean, it is aligning divine. So, you know, we're going to use some of those words that could otherwise be found in uh, different circles. And some of them might be circles that many of us have played in from time to time or from lifetime to lifetime. <laughs> So, yes, my producer, Melissa, is in the chat with me. She says, Keisha will be preaching today. Everyone be quiet. Well, you don't have to be quiet because, you know, the whole thing with church, the word, the energy of the word is celebration. So when we say go into church, we can actually acknowledge and fully express the celebratoriness of that. (laughs) And I like that word, celebratoriness. So, yes, yes, yes. Uh, So how much fun and joy and awesomeness and magic and potency and creative capacity are we ready to tap into today with praying in our plenty? And if this is your first time joining the show, first time, you know, hearing my voice, (laughs) Um, as I said, I am Keisha Clark. I am a soul and body intuitive coach. I am a a vibrational alchemist, that is my fancy word for basically describing uh, the, some of the work that I do that involves uh, toning and sound healing and um, the way that it shows up for me is very interesting and I'm still in the process of kind of finding the words that express that energy uh, in a way that it really feels like it lands for me. So um, thank you for being part of my <laughs> experimental process with that. Um, and I am, I do have the pleasure of being the host here on Aligning Divine and I also get to play with lots of other different forms of um, energy and energetic work with bodies and with beings. Um, how did I get so freaking lucky? <laughs> so, Oh, wait, I chose it, and that's part of it. Yay! So uh, that speaks to what we're going to play with today as well is um, we've talked about uh, a few things on this show so far having to do with our choice to show up here on this planet Earth playground. And I want to dive right on in even further today. And uh, so we talked last week about... um, passion traps and purpose pitfalls and uh, (laughs) it was a lot of fun for me it was uh, I really was just bringing the point to the table around um, many of us create in a very different way from linear and logical and conventional and we actually chose that so firstly could we all be more willing to claim more of our choice to show up here as uh, beyond logical, beyond linear, and unconventional. Um, And really, what do we know about working with the energy, with the vibration of everything um, as the way that we organically create? So I'm just going to invite you, I am inviting you to acknowledge that as a part of how we're going to play today and how we play on this show. We are celebrating all things having to do with having the joy of lining up with your essence and living it every day. So um, we're looking at the energy of everything. And you'll hear me talk a lot about the energy of the words we use. And we're going to have quite a few shows dedicated to that uh, because how do we create? If we're energetic creators, (laughs) well, our words would be a big way. (laughs) And if the energy of the words we're using is not lining up with what we are desiring to create and what we are capable of creating, then where does that leave us? Usually, I find it has left me in a bit of a pickle. 
and it does not make me happy, <laughs> and it does not move me toward my desires um, and my targets that I desire to be creating and experiencing and expressing. So, and that is part of what we played with last week with Passion Traps and Purpose Pitfalls. You can find that episode and many others in my archives page. All you have to do is click on either my host page or look at the archives tab and click on Aligning Divine. And today, as we move into more of this energy thing, uh, we are, as I said, playing with praying in your plenty. And those are those are a couple words right there, praying and plenty, that I know have a little bit of a charge for a good few of us. So do you play with praying in your life? And yes, I'm using the word play intentionally. <laughs> do you sort of, do you like, you know, sort of pray? Do you default into prayer when things get super challenging? Do you pray 20 times a day? Have you noticed what shows up if and when you pray? And have you ever wondered about that? Like for some, prayer amounts to little more than begging. And that's my interesting point of view. And that's also what I observe in the world. And some people pray as a demand to God or the universe. And others use prayer as a form of making a wish or an affirmation. So we don't have to make any of these forms of prayer wrong or these methods of prayer wrong or these ways that we pray wrong. Everyone has what works for them. And so the question is, do any of those actually work for you? Yeah, so this week's adventure is into a different way of praying in our plenty. And so I'm just going to say, this is not about affirmations as much as it is about the energy that we're going to go beyond where some of us, possibly many of us, have been willing to play with before. So you might already be choosing this. And if you are, that's awesome. Hang around and celebrate with us. And if you're not yet, then you might find it could shift maybe just a few things for you. <laughs> or it could shift possibly everything for you and for the way that you create your life and your living. And so, my beautiful co-creators in the world, in the universe, um, firstly, I just want to put our attention on the word pray and prayer and praying. Yes, that's three words. I get that. Thank you for checking. And <laughs> so when we talk about the energy of words, of course, I love to go to one of my favorite resources, the online etymology dictionary. And... Um, Partly because I'm just a geek that way, I'm fascinated by where did this come from? How did we use that? What did what were we intending with that? And then I also love to see, in many cases, you know, the different roots in different languages. Um, it fascinates me that we have so many languages, uh, and we actually have. I was um, I'm I also have the great honor of being a producer with this network, with Inspired Choices Network, and um, I was uh, working in person yesterday with a couple of our hosts, and one of our hosts in particular, her name is Elfie Joe, and you might know her show Musical Magic with Elfie Joe. It's a fantastic show, and if you don't know it, you should definitely check it out. Um, so she records her shows in English. Chinese and Dutch. And as I was doing my production work, just listening to her record her shows, um, and I'm monitoring all the technical stuff, she's doing the hosting part, and she is actually, um, in one of her shows, she spoke four languages, because she was in this particular series of shows talking about um, drama and music and that's an upcoming series that she's going to have well it's upcoming at this moment so um and i was just fascinated because with all of the languages as she was you know speaking these different languages because she was citing some different pieces from opera different operas and i was amazed because what i realized even more um was how different languages um also have their vibration, yes, and they also have a different way that our brain uh, interga engages or interacts with the language and when we're speaking that language. So it gave, it's just starting to pop open a whole new thing about um, how we have so many languages around the planet um, and, and what really is possible for us to receive the contribution of the different languages, not as 
something that makes life more confusing, but actually as um, what is it showing us? What are these languages inviting us to? And what is the fact that we have so many different languages inviting us to? And so that's part of my fascination when I go to look up words. Um, uh, that was a little bit of a roundabout way of explaining that, and it was fun. So, so when we look up the word pray as a verb, um, it showed up around the 13th century, and it actually was originally involving the energy of ask earnestly, and here's this word, beg, is another way that that was used, another interpretation of that word, another application of that word. Um, it also uh, was used as to pray to a god or saint. And then, um, let's see if there's anything, to ask earnestly, to entreat. Um, so this is to request... Um, the, all of these energies are, are this ask energy, and in some cases, it, for me, this kind of has a bit of a um, spectrum. And when you have a word like beg, that's a pretty strong word for some of us. Um, not exactly something that we think of as asking. You know, what comes to mind is when I was like three and four and we would be in a store and I would see something I really, really, really wanted and I would go into my asking mode, which was essentially begging because I was doing the, can we please, can we please have it, can we please have it? And of course, for me, my biggest thing as a child was I wanted a horse. And so I was forever asking if we could have a horse. Of course, um, that did not happen until many years later, so... But when we look at the word pray, what do you notice? Like, what are you really aware of? And if pray or prayer or praying has been a word that you've kind of felt this resistance to in your life, you know, like there's just always been maybe a sideways energy or this little wiggle energetically that you couldn't quite put your finger on or your, you know, your energetic finger on, um, maybe you were perceiving how this is being used. Maybe you actually know more than you thought you knew <laughs> beyond cognitive <laughs> knowing. And so then we go to the word prayer, and it's not that it, it's a noun um, is really the main difference. It's not drastically different from what we found in the definition of pray, uh, also from the 13th century, and um, or rather 14th century, around the 1300s, um, to, to petition, to request, um, and it's uh, there's another one, obtained by prayer, given as in favor, um, to ask, to beg, to pray, to entreat. So I think this is really fascinating that this energy is kind of built into these words and what do we actually know about this. Um, I personally, from a very early age, when I saw people pray, it was just weird to me. Um, could not have explained why it was weird. It was just always weird because it felt icky. It felt odd. It felt off. And it felt unauthentic in the way that many of the people that I was around were praying. So what I saw and what I was associating with the word pray and praying and prayer was really not anything that looked like fun to me. Um, so that was a big influence for me in my early years. Um, I did the whole tour of churches thing <laughs> as a kid, um, and I'm grateful that I had a family that you know was okay with me doing that. It, it gave me a lot of um, kind of a wide open field to just explore and experiment um, with some different belief structures. And it was all fascinating to me. Um, I was one of the kids from a very early age <laughs> In Sunday school, I think I probably, I know I've shared this a couple of times, but I do think I was probably every Sunday school teacher's nightmare um, because I was that kid that would debate what they wanted to teach. <laughs> and even though I had no, you know, I could offer no proof or I could cite no instances or or versions of text to back myself up, um, I was essentially just challenging whatever they put out. And usually it was because it was so incredibly insane to me, some of the things they would say, because a lot of what they were teaching um, in those days was very subjective and very conditional and 
for me, being the um, energy-speaking child <laughs> in the universe, um, it just did not line up. And so everything they were describing as this is how you're supposed to be, I was like, but I'm not that, and that isn't how it works for me. And And I genuinely, in many cases, wanted them to help me have a different way of looking at that and help me understand why that was. Um, so how many of you have experienced that, have had a similar kind of experience? Did you at any point in your life find yourself sitting in some congregation somewhere or maybe more than one, having that experience of, okay, I hear what you're saying, but it is not lining up with my experience. It's not lining up with what I know. It's not lining up with who I am or how I've been and, and what is really true for me. So what do I do with this? Because it's kind of a big deal when they're doing their sermons and their lessons and their, you know, and you see a lot of people nodding their head yes. And, you know, depending on what church you're going to or what congregation you're in, some people are jumping up and running around and speaking in tongues and some people are falling down and fainting and, you know, just depends. So you have all of this intensity of energies. And sometimes we just really are looking for what do I do with this? Because my experience is not like you say it's supposed to be. So if you have experienced that, firstly, wherever you might be holding any conscious, any unconscious, any uh, multiple lifetime or dimensional conscious or unconscious, angst from that, intensity from that, frustration, conflict, contrast, um, whatever word you want to put there that essentially means uh, the energies aren't lighting up, um, would you be willing to just acknowledge that you actually had some awareness with all of that and you actually have some capacities with all of that and that you were in a moment of having an awareness of something you knew and you just maybe didn't have the vocabulary or the tools to be able to put that together for yourself and express it for yourself and have a way to interpret your own awareness. Wow, let's do that a lot today. Can we please just acknowledge for ourselves we actually know something about this energy thing and when we're in the presence of people, and this goes for anything, school, church, work, whatever environment you're in and you have that experience, Whenever you bump into something like that, would you just be willing to acknowledge you know something beyond what is being talked about and beyond and different from the way it is being talked about? And what if you just stopped in those moments or quickly after those moments and let yourself, one, acknowledge, okay, there's some wonkiness here. What do I know about this? What am I really aware of? What is this really for me? you might be surprised <laughs> what that can change. And so I invite you to play with that a lot. And especially if you have had or are having the experience of, um, you know, I hear a lot of people talking about looking for their church home. And no, this is not a conversation about churches as much as it is about, we're talking about the word, the energy of the word church. And yet, how much of us, how many of us have looked for that place, that church, that congregation, or that group that could feel like home so that we could have that similarity in the way we celebrate, so we can have the community and the camaraderie and the kindredship. And that's a big thing for a lot of us, and that's okay. So if that's something that's going on for you, what could you choose in this moment? What energy do you require? And what energy does your body require that would allow this to be more ease for you? And that would allow you to actually tap into the celebration that is possible, that is the energy of church in the way that we actually know beyond our cognitive knowing that it is and can be. Yes. All right. Wow, on that note, <laughs> on that breath, I invite you to just be with this for a couple of minutes. We're going to take a quick break and let this energy come up. I am so excited for this to be a place and a space 
that we can congregate and commune here and co-create here. And so if you would like to use this as a time and a space to change something, let's choose that. Let's choose more of that. What if there is no limit and there is no wrong way or time or place for us to change our lives? <laughs> what if we can celebrate in every moment? And that is part of what we're going to play with and, and play more with with our topic today, praying in your plenty. So don't go too far. Um, we're going to take a quick break. You're listening to Aligning Divine Radio Show with me, Keisha Clark, on the Inspired Choices Network. We are praying in our plenty today, and we'll be right back. Within each of us, there is a spark of the essence that gives rise to all that is in the universe. Are you ready to let it light up your life? Tune in to Aligning Divine Radio Show with Soul and Body Coach Keisha Clark for fresh perspectives and powerful tools to be aligning with your divine essence and living it every day. Join us for Aligning Divine Radio Show every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Aligning Divine Radio Show with soul and body coach Keisha Clark. To bring your question on the show, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736 or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You may also email your questions or comments to Keisha at KeishaClark.live. Now back to the show. <laughs> welcome back and welcome forward, my friends, to the Aligning Divine Radio Show. Our next segment here on our topic today, play. Praying in your plenty. And I did realize I made one slight error in our when I referred to it last week's episode as passion traps and purpose pitfalls. That was actually two weeks ago. Last week we talked about your signature recipe. And that actually uh, factors into this week's conversation as well. Really, they all kind of go together. But the signature recipe, we were talking about the energies that you chose to come in with and through when you decided to come play on this planet Earth playground. And uh, as we look at that, that is a part of this plenty energy that I want to get into. Um, so I am going to – I didn't pull up this page ahead of time. Let me pull it up now in our handy-dandy online etymology dictionary. And we have plenty as a noun – so again, interestingly, from the, the 13th <laughs> century, um, as much as one could desire, I kind of like that. Uh, another version is abundance, profusion, and fullness, uh, or full, or filled, greatly crowded, <laughs> stout, pregnant, abundant, abounding, complete also meaning condition of general abundance. Now, that's from later in the 14th century. And then the, collo the colloquial adverb, meaning very much, is first attested in the mid-1800s. So plenty, when you say that word, what, what happens for you, if anything? It's not required that something has to happen. What, if anything, does happen for you? Is there a little tweak? Is there a little shimmer? Is there a little ripple? What do you notice? Um, do you perceive it in the ethers around you or do you, does something kind of stir physically for you or both? Or again, 
neither. It doesn't have to be. Plenty is an interesting um, word and energy for me. Um, I hear us talk a lot about uh, being enough, and I see a lot of you know um, inspirational quotes about you are enough. Um, and I there's something around the word enough again that was just never quite landing for me when we speak about it in that way. When I see these quotes and and I hear these passages that are talking about being enough, having enough, doing enough, there's there's just this little sideways something in the word enough. And I go, huh, it's like there's something more. Like, yes, this is good, and what else could we choose? And when I play with the word plenty, for me, the energy that really lights up and lines up is abundance, fullness. And I love that the you know they included the word pregnant. It's like that very, um, very satisfyingly filled, only there's also this uh, sense of it's not a state. It's not a place we get to. Just like I I talk about on the show Aligning Divine, the, the theme of that aligning uh, is that it's not a state. It's not about getting aligned and, and being there because that's not a place that we just land on and hang out for a while. And then, you know, and it's certainly not a place that most of us can land on and dare for the rest of our lives. So we're, we're playing with the ING version. And the plenty, the word plenty, to me, has this movement to it. It has flow to it. And it has, I, I perceive that fullness. I perceive that um, ever-expanding creative energy of the word, it, it, within the word. And so that's what I like to play with, with the word plenty, and that's how I like to play with the word. Now, whatever that means for you is completely fine. It is completely awesome um, because that's part of how we come here to play is we look for the energies that line up with what we're desiring to choose or to play with or to create in any given moment. So for me, plenty is a fun word that I'm playing with right now. So praying in your plenty. Now, um, you might have heard, uh, I know that there are a number of uh, folks who are very well known in the self-awareness and personal development and healing arenas uh, in, the, in the world, in the universe, that have had long-time conversations about different modalities of prayer. Um, and so this is... We're going to do a little bit of a sort of review in case you're, you haven't heard some of this and also to just bring these energies into the conversation today. So there are several modalities of prayer and they are actually called modalities of prayer. <laughs> and um, we're just going to kind of acknowledge them because as I was saying in the first section, so first segment, um, the thing that I noticed a, a lot of the time as a kid uh, about what I saw happening when people were quote unquote praying to me, looked like begging, looked like desperation, looked like wishing and hoping. And I get that a lot of us, myself included, we adopt that version of prayer. Uh, I think that's probably like one of the early stages. We adopt that version thinking that that's what we're supposed to do, right? Because there's this big, powerful thing somewhere out there in the universe, and we're supposed to ask it for what we want, <laughs> Right? So um, so that is a form. That is a choice. That is an option. Um, there is, um, I, I would say that we probably find for some of us that that, that actually does create sometimes uh, what we're asking for. Um, probably shows up in a, in a, in a vibrational uh, way that, I don't know. I don't know if we're really acknowledging the... What's the word I'm looking for? The sustainability of what shows up. Uh, is it sustainable? What do you know from your life if you've used this form of prayer, if you've prayed through in this, mo in this way? Um, what has shown up? And was it sustainable? Uh, or was it sort of fleeting? Yeah. So there's the colloquial form, the colloquial, colloquial modality. 
<laughs> and that is that asking for. Uh, it's very similar to, in, in the way I play with it, it's very similar to the petitioner modality, which is another way. We're, we're asking the powers that be, we're asking the deity to do something for us. And that's very much uh, the energy that I was perceiving in the definitions we read of the word pray and prayer. There's recitative. Um, we just recite prayers over and over again. There's certain prayers that we say millions and millions of times. Now, I thought that was always kind of fascinating too because I was like, what are we actually doing when we're saying it for the hundredth time in a row? Hmm. And I get that for some people that is a functional way to pray. It works for them. And again, part of this I invite you to be using as a way of discovering what is really true for you so you can honor that. Um, so we're not making that wrong. We're not making any of these wrong, as I said earlier. The recitative, uh, the Lord's Prayer, is probably one that most of us uh, think of right away. Um, different scriptures, different verses are also used in uh, as recitative uh, work, recitative studies, recitative... Um, uh, what's the word? Um, essentially, when we go into... Um, I want to say when we go into chambers, you know, it's like when we we um, we retire into those quiet spaces and we use recitative um, verses and scriptures and prayers. And essentially, I think for a lot of us, it's to get our mind to calm down. It's to put our our focus on something so that the chatter um, goes away, or we at least uh, move it out, and we put it aside for a while. So I think for some people for whom that really works, it, that's one of the features that really allows them to suspend the noise and just have their focus on the words that are being recited. And that's very close cousin, in, in, in my interesting point of view, to meditative, the meditative modality of prayer, when we actually go into that meditative state. Some of us use recitation to get there. Others are able to do that with music or um, with uh, focusing on some object or some sound, so it's not necessarily has to involve spoken word. So all of these uh, modalities um, of prayer have value for the people for whom they work. And what I want to ask you is, are you one of them? So does it work for you? Does one of these forms really work for you? And if not, if you feel like you haven't really found what really does work for you, like, you know, you see people doing the prayer thing and you don't see the same kinds of results. <laughs> so here's an interesting thing. When we look at prayer, and and I've been playing with this on my own, too. I mean, for me, this is, you know, I'm... I'm I'm very much a part of this. This is very much a part of my process ongoing as I talk about it today. Um, I'm not sharing this with you from a place that I have like arrived and and um, placed myself. You know, I'm not fixed in this position. I'm just fascinated by what I'm playing with, and this is part of my excitement to share this with you. So, so. When we look at these different modalities and we, uh, being energetic creators, <laughs> for those of us who, for whom energy is that primary mode of creation, like it's just right out in front for us. It's not a linear thing. It's not, we, we don't create as much from the physical, although what we create shows up in the physical world in most cases. That's not the primary way we can approach something or that we organically approach something when we're when we're playing with creation. When we look at these modalities, look at the energies within each of these modalities. Now, everything in the universe functions from the vibration, whether it matches or doesn't match. So if your philosophy, your personal beliefs, I'm saying that in air quotes, if your methods are based in the vibrational foundation or the vibrational stru the st uh, vibrational structure that matches any of these modalities, the odds are pretty good that it will create for you. That's simply how energy works. 
The nature of energy is that it responds. You're going to hear me say that a lot over the course of this show. <laughs> and if you've listened to any of my previous shows, you've probably already heard me say that a lot. Because that is the nature of energy. It responds. This is a universe that responds to us. And we respond to the universe. Now, we do have this funny thing we do sometimes, and it you know involves resistance. <laughs> we don't respond perhaps in a way that is very... Um, open or receptive, but we're always responding. Now, another piece of this is reaction versus responding, but that's not the topic of today's conversation, so we'll save that for another time. So if you are, um, if you're being in an energy or being an energy that actually vibrationally matches these modalities, they can work for you. And that's part of what sets up what you're probably seeing if you're noticing that there are people for whom these modalities work very well. I have known of people who have always functioned from victim energy, what I would call victim energy. When they pray, it comes from what I would call victim mentality. It's all about begging. It's all about petitioning. It's all about, I am so incapable and weak and I need you and then they insert whatever deity's name, I need you to do this for me. So if that comes from a place of authentic vibrational match to the energy of what that modality is, the energy can line up and come through. Now, again, it's vibrational. It's about does it match? Does it sync up? Is it harmoniously able to connect? or is it able to harmoniously connect? We could put it that way. Um, so again, this is not. there's no judgment here because the universe has no preference of how we pray. The universe doesn't actually have, well, I'll just ask you this question. What do you know <laughs> when you look at the question? Does the universe actually have a preference that you pray? What's really beyond that? There's something interesting. I don't know if you noticed it, but when I asked you that question, the energy rippled. So what do you actually know? And that is where I want to play with, praying in our plenty. Now, something very awesomely cool in, for me. <laughs> um, I, when I was in theater history class in college was really the first time that I started to be able to connect with different um, teachings that actually gave me quite a lot of awareness about uh, the history of most religion as it's done on this planet. And so I was fascinated, of course, in a theater history class. Of course, that's where I would learn about <laughs> religion, religious philosophy and belief structures and theology and all of that. So, And, and I've, I have no degree in any of it. It's not, that isn't the point. But for me, it was so surprising because the history of theater actually is very closely connected into or really interwoven into the history of religion uh, in many ways. And so, uh, again, that's not our topic today, but that's where I first started to have my my new awarenesses begin to pop around, oh, wow, what do I actually know about this? So maybe it's not the stories that I've heard so far. Maybe it's actually beyond that. So what do you actually become aware of when you play with the question, does the universe have a, a preference or a requirement that I pray? Huh. Hmm. What do you get? when you play with that. Hmm. And again, if we can look at this through the lenses of no investment, what can you become aware of? And then are you willing to acknowledge that? Are you willing to just acknowledge it? So for me, I'm acknowledging, I get a big fat no when I ask that question. The universe has no care, not one iota of a care, <laughs> whatever an iota is. The universe has no investment that I pray. What I get is the universe desires me to connect. The universe is calling me. Now, you can use any name you want for universe. This energy, this force, this power, it's calling me. It beckons me. It invites me. I feel that. I perceive it. I feel it. I sense it. 
And so that is my experience of this energy that gives rise to, okay, so what's a different way for me to connect with the universe? And we are talking about aligning divine, of course. So connecting, so how do we connect? What are the ways we can connect? Are we willing to connect with the universe? And in one of my first few shows of the Aligning Divine show, um, because I've actually had three incarnations of a show, one of the first, I think it was our second show, we talked about embodiment. And we talked about we are an expression of the universe. So might it be normal and natural that we would have that sense of where is home? Where is home? Ah, my friends, now we open an energy that lets us play even bigger. So right here, right now, right there in this space, Let's just linger here for a moment and suspend any thoughts, any anything that we've made a reason to not be in this space. And we're going to do a quick commercial break. When we come back, we are going to jump into the polity that we are praying in. So thank you for playing here on the Line New Divine Radio Show. We're on the Inspired Choices Network. We'll be right back. Within each of us, there is a spark of the essence that gives rise to all that is in the universe. Are you ready to let it light up your life? Tune in to Aligning Divine Radio Show with Soul and Body Coach Keisha Clark for fresh perspectives and powerful tools to be aligning with your divine essence and living it every day. Join us for Aligning Divine Radio Show every Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is Aligning Divine Radio Show with soul and body coach Keisha Clark. To bring your question on the show, call in the U.S. 815-880-8255. In Canada, 613-800-8736. Or Skype us at Inspired Choices Network. You may also email your questions or comments to Keisha at KeishaClark.live. Now back to the show. <laughs> Welcome back and forward to this next segment of Aligning Divine here on the Inspired Choices Network. I am Keisha Clark. I am so grateful to be playing with you today. And we are playing with Praying in Your Plenty. So now we have come to this beautiful space, and thank you for participating in this and co-creating this and being willing to play with this, where we're going we're gonna to dive into the... Um, this verse that uh, is one of the verses that was um, edited. Um, we let's just could we all be willing? All of us who are playing with this, could we be willing to um, just allow ourselves to acknowledge for a few minutes, <laughs> even if it's just a few minutes, that um, we do have some awareness that the scriptures for every single belief structure um, and culture and and every um, collection of, of beliefs, uh, they've been edited, they have been played with, they have been uh, rearranged and reconfigured over the eons, and that's just part of what we have chosen to do. Now, we can have lots of conversation about what we think about that, and I don't think that that's really required for me. Um, it's not really required. Um, it's more about what do we know. It's more about what resonates 
what is it that we can be aligning with? Where is that piece that resonates with the essence of us? Where are those pieces? And what are those pieces that resonate with the essence of us? And that is the that is really how we change what is working for us. It does not have to be difficult. So um not going to speak on the evils of all of that. <laughs> Um, yes, I've had those conversations and sometimes they're fun and they don't, you know, that isn't, I don't see that changing much. Okay, yes, that's a factual piece of information. Document and text was changed, was altered, was edited, was translated uh, in such a way that it changed the meaning, it changed the way that it relates people to, to the information and it changes how the information can be used. We Could we just acknowledge that we're aware of that? And could we maybe even acknowledge um, where we perpetrated that, consciously or unconsciously, in any lifetime that we're willing to include in this, right? And so what I love about this is um, several years ago, I really began to be fascinated with learning the translations from the Aramaic text. Um, and again, I am no expert. I don't, won't even pretend <laughs> that I have a handle on it. Um, I still go a lot. And this is where I get a lot of my information and material from. So I do my best to do kind of, you know, fact-checking and um, cross-checking and cross-referencing and all of that. And I invite you to do that for you. If you have any kind of energetic wiggle in anything that I'm saying, um, go and look. Go and seek. Um, <laughs> seek and you shall find. <laughs> and that brings us to ask and you shall receive. And what is so exciting to me is, it's like having this amazing key to the kingdom that's sort of just, you know, sitting here in a fountain for anybody that is really willing to look over here and notice this little shiny thing, <laughs> right? So this is a verse um, translated actually from the Aramaic text. And, of course, it is including a couple of the lines that were edited out of our current or modern versions of the text of this verse. Now, this is from uh this is from actually uh, the author of uh, is Neil Douglas Klotz. His book was Prayers of the Cosmos. Um it's also been quoted um quite a bit in Greg Braden's work, um Secrets of the Lost Mode of Prayer, and I believe it's also revisited, well I know it's revisited on his series that's on Gaia currently uh, The Divine Matrix, and I do believe he talks more about it in one of his latest books. Um, so I'm going to read you the verse, and then we're going to, then we're going to, let's go to church, y'all. <laughs> so um, it says, all things that you ask straightly and directly from inside my name, you shall be given. So far you have not done this. Ask without hidden motive and be surrounded by your answer. Be enveloped by what you desire, that your gladness be full. Now, let's just take a second and sit in the energy of that. Do you, does anybody perceive this yumminess that starts to bubble up or is starting to bubble up? That's, that's going on for me. I'm noticing that. If you're noticing, just acknowledge that. Just acknowledge that. So the parts that we have heard probably all of our lives are the part that says, ask and you shall receive. Well, that's awesome. <laughs> right? Ask and you shall receive. And there is great value in that. Now, for a lot of us who have played with that for however long and found it to, you know, we're, we're asking and, yes, we some things we're receiving. Okay, cool. How do How do we change it to more receiving? How do we shift into more receiving? We're asking a whole lot more than we're receiving for, for some of us, right? Um, and here's one of the keys. Uh, asking from inside my name. This phrase, from inside my name. Now, I get that a lot of people have interpreted this as that you have to say in Jesus' name, because this is actually quoted as something that Jesus said in response to being asked, how do we pray? And and I get why they would interpret it that way. Now, to me, as I be with this energy of this, um, in the stories of Jesus, the character of Jesus, the prophet, 
the teacher, the way shower. Um, there's nothing in here that I perceive him saying that you have to say my name. <laughs> it's more about he is showing us, asking from inside the I am. So to me, what this speaks to is tapping into the I am that we are. Each of us is. And you hear that as we go to break each time. Within each of us, there is the spark of the essence that gives rise to all that is in the universe. The I am, the essence of you, that's where you bring the universe in and to and through in the physical expression as the physical expression of you. So when we look at from inside my name, we are tapping into and acknowledging the I am that we are. So far, you have not done this. So what I get that that's referring to is that from prior to that, it was popular to do supplication. It was popular to petition. It was popular to beg. And that was a very, um, that was what it was believed. Now, this was, you know, throughout our millions of years. I mean, if you look at our uh, stories with different gods and goddesses, what did they do? They, they gave up offerings. They made sacrifices. He's saying, so far you have not done this from inside my name. So when we take that then even further, ask without hidden motive and be surrounded by your answer. Ask without investment and be surrounded by your answer. So he's actually referring to, in the way I'm playing with this, and I invite you to play with it, tap the energy of what you are desiring Tap into the having of it, the receiving and having of it. Because it says, be enveloped by what you desire. So we're going to bring this energy into our field. Now, friends, what if this is also the key to the quantum field? And if you play with Bruce Lipton or Greg Braden or... Uh, um, Joe Dispenza, or any, you know, a lot of our current um, leaders, way showers, <laughs> um, and teachers, they're, they're helping bring this information more into the forefront. So when you are tapping into that energy without investment, without an investment on how it shows up, when it shows up, you can know that it is showing up. So if you are asking for wellness, and you are tapping into the quantum field by tapping into this energy and letting yourself actually be present with it and letting yourself receive it, perceive it, receive it, have it, be with it. You are enveloped by it and within it. And let yourself have the joy of that. Then we could call it not praying for something, but praying it in. So you pray wellness. Or you might pray rain. And what if we were choosing, what if we were willing to choose to be doing this with our plenty? So pray plenty. Pray your plenty. Would you be willing to do this? Would you be willing to start choosing this, my friend? I invite you to play with that this week. Pray in your plenty. Pray your plenty. And be glad of it. And we will see you next week on Aligning Divine. Thank you so much. And Thank have a fantastic Aligning Divine Radio week. Show. Keisha Clark has more to share next Wednesday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. And for now, she is cheering you on to create an awesome week of lining up with your essence and living.